name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we celebrate the, the glorious feast of Palm Sunday. It's one of my favorite feasts in the church. And I love it because today we get to celebrate Christ as King. Christ as King. And in the Gospels we hear the prophecy of Zechariah says, Behold, your King is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, the colt, the foal of a donkey. So today I want to speak to you about Christ as King. And because Christ is a very special King, He's not like any of the kings in the past or the present or the future. He's a very unique king. And today, we're going to discuss five aspects of his kingship. First, every king, they have to rule somewhere, right? They have to have a land or something. Where do they rule? How, do, how will this king rule? How does the king rule? What principles, what things does this king bring with him? How will this king rule his people? Over whom will he rule? So where will he rule and over whom will he, will he rule over a certain group of people or which people will he rule over? And how long will this kingdom uh, last? How long will the king last? Every king has a time period. So how long will the king last? And I think these four questions were all answered in one place, which I would like to read with you. And that was Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Psalm 72 is a psalm by King Solomon. And it's a, it's a psalm about kings. And as we read it, you'll see that King Solomon was actually writing about the king, Jesus Christ, as king. So I want to read with you some of Psalm 72. It says, Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. And as you remember, maybe you've heard in the Gospels, our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, the Father judges no one, but all judgment he has given to the, to the son. So here you see the, the prayer starts off with that, the, that the, the son be given judgment. And what's very nice, it says, and your righteousness to the king's son. Who is the king's son? Actually, the king and the king's son means that the, the, like, our Lord Jesus Christ, his father is also a, a king, and the king's son will rule and judge. The next part says, he will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. It says, the mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Here we see that the people of God ought to be poor. That's the type of people that God wants to rule over. Those poor in spirit. Those who are humble. For blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then he said, the mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. What did the mountains and the hills have to do with the king? And why will they bring peace and righteousness. St. Augustine, in his commentary on this psalm, he says that the mountains are the leaders of the church and the hills are the, the followers of the leaders. And it's very nice that here you see creation is a servant to the, the king. The creation is a servant to the king. And so the mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. And that's why one of the, the things that St. Augustine says is it's very important that the leaders of the church, they bring peace. They bring peace because that's the foundation. And then, the, and then because if, the, if the, the leaders of the church bring peace, then the little hills, the followers, will be able to be righteous. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy, and he will break in pieces the oppressor. Here you see how this king is not going to be like other kings who acquire wealth. No, actually, he's going to be an advocate for the people. He's going to fight on behalf of the poor. He will save the children of the needy. He will break in pieces the oppressor. This reminded me of St. Mary's praise 
St. Mary's praise was very similar. How, you know, it was all about, He scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich He has sent away empty. This is the type of king that we have. Then it says, They, they, uh, they shall fear you as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. So how long will this king reign? How long will the king, king reign? He will reign forever, throughout all generations. That's why one of the psalms that we say is, Your throne is... Right? Your throne is forever. You will reign as a king forever, and no one else will sit on, on this throne. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before the mowing, like showers that water on the earth. Here I'll ask you, who will be his subjects? And this was very interesting, that St. Augustine, he ties this piece to the piece of Gideon. Do you know the story of Gideon? When he saw the fleece and the land dry, and then he asked for another sign, and then he saw the, the, dry ground, or the ground wet, but then the fleece dry. And he tied it to that, and he said about who will be his subjects, because the fleece represents, the fleece represents Israel. And so when, is, when Gideon asked for the fleece to become wet, it was as if the sun was coming, the son of God, the king is coming to Israel. The second sign shows the rejection of Israel, that Israel will be left dry, and the ground will be, will be wet. So it actually shows that the king is coming for all his people, for everyone. So who, all of us will be his subjects. In his days the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. I like this because kings, if you think about it, like what makes this country so great? What makes this, or what made it great at the beginning? Make, it a, make America great again. But what, was, what made it great when it was founded? It was that it was founded with Christian principles, founded on the equality of, of everyone, that if you worked hard, that you could achieve. And so the fundamental principles of the king made a big impression on the country. Here you see the same thing. It says, in his days the righteous shall flourish. Now the righteous under this king, they have an opportunity to flourish. Why? Because in, under this king, he has given you the ability to grow in his word. He has given you the Holy Spirit. He has given you all the tools necessary for you to be successful, for you to flourish. For you to grow. No other kings, if you lived in Saudi Arabia, you're not going to flourish. Sorry. <laughs> if, but some of the, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. The king allows the people to flourish. And under the kingship of our Lord, we can flourish. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness, hear this. Because this is a psalm. So in Solomon is right. He said, Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him, and his enemies will lick the dust. This king always wins and is always victorious over his enemies. Many kings, they lose battles here and there. They have, you know, times of victory, times of... This king always wins. Always wins, and his enemies will lick his feet, or lick the dust of his feet. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles, they will bring presents. This king will be better than any other king that has walked this earth. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles, they will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Solomon, which king are you speaking about? that all kings will fall down and worship him, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He will be greater than all kings. 
For he will deliver, again, this part's kind of redundant. He will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and needy and will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life. This is interesting. Hear this about the king. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. Doesn't the Lord value us? Wouldn't you say the citizens of this kingdom, he cares about his citizens, that our blood is precious in his sight? And he shall live, and the gold of Sheba will be given to him. That's because every king should... What should you do in front of every king? You should offer before every king taxes. Don't you pay taxes? Every king requires taxes. Here it says, And the gold of Sheba will be given to him. But the difference between the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ is he didn't come to tax. He came to, to save. That's why Hosanna, Osanna, Hoshana, Hoshana, I think is the Hebrew word, means God saves. God saves. He came to save his people. Hear this. Prayer also will be made for him continually. That's what Solomon says. Prayer will also be made for him continually. And daily he shall be praised. There will be abundance of grain in the earth and on top of the mountains. Its fruit shall be like the wave of Lebanon. And those of the city shall flourish like the grass of the earth. The idea of that this king, the type of taxes maybe we can offer to this king is not taxes of money or gold or silver, but taxes maybe of prayer. Come offering your prayer. Come offering a pure heart. He says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord. This sounds very familiar to what we are saying today. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Truly, we have a marvelous king, a marvelous king who rules us with the most grace and the most love. I hope we cherish our king and we shout with all joy, O Sanna in the highest. This is the king of Israel. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Yeah.